Welcome everyone to the Boiling Point Podcast, our very very special Christmas episode, episode 70, You Can't Take Christ Out of Christmas. And of course, for that episode, who else would I have other than the Boiling Point Podcast senior faith correspondent, Pastor Gavin Whitcomb. Pastor, welcome back to the Boiling Point Podcast, another Christmas time, another Christmas episode. Right. Hey, good to see you, John. And uh, thanks to all our listeners for tuning in. Yes, thank you to all of them. Um, please like and share. Um, leave a question for Pastor Gavin if you have one. Leave a comment, but please like and share. That is really what we need to continue to grow the podcast. Um, you can also follow me personally on Instagram at JDE Poster Designs. That's with a Z. Facebook, facebook.com slash The Boiling Point Podcast. Of course, our main Rumble station. Uh, rumble.com slash C for channel slash the boiling point podcast. All of that is in lowercase lettering. Um, and if you want to support us further than that, we do have a storefront bonfire.com slash store slash the boiling point podcast. Pick yourself up a t-shirt. Um, we have a lot of different styles and a lot of different, uh, types of apparel. So pick one up. Um, pastor Gavin's not wearing his this evening, but he does have one. And I'm, of course, you can't see it, but I'm wearing the American cross, um, t-shirt right now um and you should go get that one um also the blue shirt the blue the boiling point podcast with a metallic um emblem on it is also um available only for a limited time i know i said that in a couple episodes ago turned out i never actually posted it on the storefront so it's up there now and it'll be up until probably easter time so get it now because it will not be up forever only until easter and then it goes away we are going to be talking about um, Christmas in this episode, um, and of course, Jesus Christ obviously um, is the reason we celebrate Christmas, despite what some people in the mainstream media want to say, or even in government. Um, yeah. So, Pastor Gavin, I'll let you lead us on that. Um, we are going to be quoting scripture and jumping around here, so um, if anybody else wants to get their Bible out, go ahead and do so, if you would like to follow along with us when we when we go over these uh, scripture. Yeah. Well, uh, first, I, I want to let our viewers know that, that tonight I'm uh, at my church, oh, Moore's absolutely. Mountain Church. So there's this is the front of our pulpit, and there's our cross. I don't know if you can read it or not, but it says, it is finished. So why would the cross say, it is finished on it? Well, there's some of the last words that Jesus said before he died on the cross. And what he meant was, hey, everything that is necessary to provide for our salvation is completed. It's finished. The price is paid. So what we have to do is come to him in repentance and believe on him and we can receive eternal life. So, yeah. So John, we're going to talk about Christmas, the Christmas story. When I say the Christmas story, I don't mean like a fairy tale. I mean that it's <laughs> in the sense of history. Do you yeah. ever notice the word history has the word story in it? Yeah. So, so uh, Jesus is a real historical person. That's you, that is correct. Yes. Yeah, and and in fact, he's one of the most significant factors, uh, uh, people of all of history. If you look at the date on the calendar, it's the year 2022. What does that number signify? 2022 years after Jesus was born. You know. So, and and much of the Western world bases their calendar on when Christ was here. So yeah. now, and, um, I may, can I clarify something quick? You said, yeah. um, it's, it's 2022 years after, um, Christ, Christ was, born, was born, but isn't, isn't it after his death or is it from his birth? It's from his birth. Now, even though, even though AD would technically, it does not stand for after Christ's death. I thought, uh, uh no, uh, AD stands for Anno Domini. Oh, okay. And and that's that's Latin for in the year of our Lord. Oh, very good. Well, then I just yeah, so that's why it's AD. Too. Yeah, well, a lot of our listeners may have never thought of it either. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, BC is before Christ. AD is Anno Domini in the year okay. of our Lord. But uh, you know, in in uh, recent decades, some like textbook writers have changed that from BC before Christ to BCE. Yes. I mean, before the common era. Yeah. And then, and then they've changed uh, AD to ACE after the common era. So it's kind of so. Uh, I 
I heard originally they began that because they didn't want to uh, offend Jewish people because, you know, Jews don't believe that Jesus is the Christ. So, yeah. so they changed it. But, you know, the thing is, it's still based on Jesus' birth. Now, yeah. now scholars um, who look into things like this, they believe that our calendar is actually off a little bit, that maybe it was like 3 BC that Christ was born. But, you know, it's, we only say that in relation to what our calendar says today. So, but we know it was, you know, fairly close. See, people used to date uh, the years based on the reigns of certain kings. Yes. So, so at some point, I think in like the early 500s, there was a guy, uh, some monk somewhere, I don't, his name eludes me right now, I can't remember. But anyway, he said, why are we still dating time? based on the birth of a pagan emperor. Jesus is our king. So he started dating and dating things on when Christ came after Christ. Okay. Uh, Anno Domini in the year of our Lord. So that, that sort of caught on and it's, you know, continues to this day. So what's yeah. funny is that an atheist uh, or a Christ hater, when they write the date on a check or on some other document, they're acknowledging Jesus and his birth. Yeah. Well, there's no really, really, as you just said, even they can try and change the name all they want. They're still basing it on his, on his birth. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so not only did Jesus do a tremendous thing and we recognize that as Christians, you know, he, he came and, and lived a sinless life and died on the cross uh, to pay the price so we could be forgiven. And God could be right in forgiving guilty sinners because Jesus died for us and rose again. Not only is that important, but, you know, what a lot of people fail to realize is that the teachings of Jesus and his influence basically civilized much of a cruel, uh, barbaric world. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I, one thing that illustrates this, I heard of a, a guy in World War II, he was he was a God hater. He hated God, didn't believe in Christianity. And he was on one of those islands in the Pacific. And he was saying something like, look at all these stinking churches around here. And and one of the islanders who was a native to the island said, you better be glad these churches were here. If it were not for Christianity, we might be eating you right now. In other <laughs> words, they were cannibals. Yeah. What was it that changed them from being barbaric, uncivilized cannibals to people that would never think of being a cannibal and murdering you and eating you? Well, it was the influence of Christianity. In the Roman Empire, uh, if you didn't want your child, uh, you a, a father could say, okay, we want the child, and he would put his thumbs up. Yeah. But if he didn't want to keep the child, he would put his thumbs down. That's where that came from originally. You know, thumbs up, thumbs down means yeah. no. And they could, if they didn't want the child, they could just let, the, in fact, sometimes they would do this, just set the child out so that, you know, wild animals could come yeah. and devour it or some weird predator could come get it or whatever. Uh, yeah. Human life was cheap. Also, and the, no gladiator, guy, the gladiator yeah. games, I believe, the thumbs up and the thumbs down. Um, yeah. That's yep. where that carried over into that. Yep, certainly. So, so a lot of these cruel practices, you know, they were uh, uh, removed from society based on the influence of Jesus. So, like a, a lot of the law and order and the blessings that we've seen in America are because of the influence of Christianity. So, you look at when Christian influence is removed. Well, you have look at these cities where people are rioting and burning things down. That's not following Christian principles. Yeah, yeah. absolutely not. Um, rioting is not is not the way. No, you know that it's supposed to. That you know, you know, what I mean, uh, as we talked about in a previous episode, self defense, but going out and destroying other people's property um, just for you because you think something is is unbalanced or or wrong um, about yeah. the government or laws. Um, that's not how laws are changed. Um, you can look through all of history, and the only time protesting has worked is the peaceful kind, the one where you just resist, not fight back, where you just resist. And mm -hmm. those are the those are the ones that see more change than anything else. Yeah. yeah. Um, so people who were out there rioting and looting, they weren't looking for change. They were just looking for a reason to go out and burn stuff to the ground. 
Yeah, yeah, it's totally wrong. And it's that's not loving God with all your heart and not loving your neighbor as yourself, you know? Yeah. So now, um, so what is it that made Jesus different? So at, at Christmas time, we celebrate his birth. And if anyone is deserving of that, it's Jesus. Uh, so what is it that makes Jesus unique? Well, we know from the scriptures that he is the son of God. And, and so, you know, in Luke chapter one, uh, the Christmas story, and I mean story in the sense of history of it, began, it says that there was a virgin espoused a man whose name was Joseph. This is Luke one twenty seven. So notice that Mary was a virgin. Okay, so she had never sexually known a man. She kept herself clean and pure. And she was espoused to a man named Joseph. You know, the term espoused, see, they didn't, they had a totally different culture than we do today, John. They, uh, back in that day, marriage went like this. Usually the parents would agree to give their daughter to, to somebody's son. So they, at that point, they were espoused. They were legally married. So it was stronger than engagement. You could only break that espousal by a divorce. But they didn't live together until usually like a year later. Then they would have a marriage feast, and then from that point on, they would consummate their marriage physically, uh, sexually, and live together as man and wife. Then they would have kids and whatever. So uh, Mary was a spouse to Joseph, and uh, you know he was of the house of David, which meant he was a descendant of King David, and that and so was Mary. So both Mary and Joseph were descendants of King David. Now, that wasn't incestuous because they were 30, more than 30 generations from David. So okay. these are, you know, uh, extended, way extended. You know, they were the same clan, but, you know, they weren't brother and sister. Far from it. Yeah. Okay, so, so and there wasn't anything weird about that. And so the virgin's name was Mary. So the angel Gabriel says, hail Mary. Uh, hail meaning means hello. Uh, and, uh, do you know that the, um, custom of saying hello in English to greet people, I was reading that about 150 years ago that everybody said hail, but when the telephone was invented and the first answer on the, the telephone was hello, it sort of caught on before that people said hail. So hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And so then. He says, you know, you're going to bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. He'll be called the son of God. Now, um, so uh, in the Old Testament scriptures, you know, we find that the Bible teaches that there would be in Isaiah 9, 6, a, a a man, a, a child, a, a son would be born. A, uh, a uh, unto us a child is born. A son is given, and uh, so that's the first coming of Christ. But a lot of times when the prophets talked about Jesus, uh, they would like compress a huge swath of time into one verse. So in other words, one verse was like a a panoramic view of what would happen over a long period of time. So it's common that they would they would mention the first coming of Christ and the second coming of Christ in one verse. Yeah. Because it wasn't their purpose to to give the time frame. It was just the writer's purpose to say, hey, here's what's going to happen. Yeah. So so the son who would be born, but when the government would be upon his shoulders and his name would be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, and he would reign over the house of Jacob forever. That speaks about events during his second coming. Okay. See, see, the Old Testament scriptures talked about Jesus being the king over all the earth, ruling and reigning upon the throne of David. But the same scri- scriptures tell us that he would be killed. Uh, Daniel chapter 9 says that the Messiah would be cut off. He would be killed. If you read Isaiah 52 and Isaiah 53, the end of chapter 52, and then Isaiah 53, it's it reads like you're reading the New Testament so clearly about Jesus and he being despised and rejected 
and wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. It describes his rejection and his suffering. So how could both be true? Yeah. Um, well, the first time he would come to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. When he returns again in power and in glory, it's not going to be to deal with the sin question. It'll be, he'll, he'll you know, rid the earth of evil and rule and reign over all the earth in peace and in righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, so Mary says, um, how can this be? You know, you know, without, without a man, how am I going to have a child without a man? And uh, the angel Gabriel said that the power of the Holy Spirit would come upon her. The Holy Ghost would come upon her. The power of the highest, that's the power of God, would yeah. overshadow her. And she would conceive in her womb and bring forth the Son of God. So now, um, so see, Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, meaning he is, you know, his human body was generated by God and apart from a human man. And also that because he's the son of God, he's he has the same nature as God. He's equal with God the Father, but he's a man. So, so he was the son of God and also son of man, meaning human, but he was not a son of Adam. Because, okay. you know, it wasn't another man who was his father. So, you know, if I could, let me say that again, because it's really important. Jesus yeah. is the son of God and the son of man, but not the son of Adam. So, see, he was he was different in that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So the, the, it, oh, the son of I just want to clarify for anybody who may have lost us here. When you say the son of Adam, you mean from from the garden, from Adam and Eve is what you mean. Right. there, Right. Yeah. Right, because you and I are sons of Adam and Eve. We're the yes. descendants of them. So Jesus was a son of man, meaning fully human, but God was his father, and and uh, there wasn't another human man involved. Now, see, if, if now, his real father biologically would have been another man, then he would be a son of Adam, and he would be a sinner like you and yeah, me. Yeah. But that's how how God was able to become a man in the person of Christ, and yet be sinless, because he was not a son of Adam. Okay, now um, let's let me um, ask you a, couple, a few, just a few questions here, right quick, on because that's mm. what a lot of people have problems with is that Mary is a virgin who gives birth. You know, a lot of people right. are like, yeah, the oldest story in the book, in meaning this, I would imagine when they say that. Um, what do you do? You have anything for that? Um, I mean, I don't, well, <laughs> that sounds kind yeah. of rude. I didn't mean. Do you have anything for that? No, I mean, no. like how? What? How would one refute? You know, the people who claim that. Oh well, she's yeah. a bird. Come on, you know. Yeah. Well, I would say this. Okay, that no doubt doesn't normally happen. It's a miracle. But if yeah. in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, then you know He can't do a miracle. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. and, and so people that say, well, I don't believe God created heaven and the earth. Well, then how do you think the universe got here? And they'll say, well, it just kind of popped into existence. Yeah, That's the Big miracle. Bang or whatever. Yeah. Right. And, so, yeah. So the, right. So the order and complexity of the universe just popping into existence on its own, that's a miracle. So yeah. the whole, the atheist's whole worldview rests and depends on a miracle from the very beginning. Well, you know, we believe in the beginning God created it, and you can see his fingerprints all over it. So if God could create the universe by speaking it into existence, it's nothing for him to, you know, uh, decide to set aside or override one of his laws of nature and cause Mary to conceive a child who would be the son of God. To, to, to us, that's a piece of cake, but that's what I would say to skeptics who, who doubt that. Yeah, um, and um, I would also like to say that, um, actually, I forgot what I was going to say, so that's, yep. Then, yes, I would agree with that. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> so Mary, uh, she says in verse 38, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. A handmaid is a servant. Uh, so, so she, what, you know, we female, I'm sorry, what? What book uh, this is Luke one thirty-eight. Oh, okay. 
So now, now think of this. You know, people would no doubt misunderstand Mary. They would, they would, oh, you're having a baby. Well, you and Joseph haven't had your marriage feast yet and lived together. So what's going on here? Were you with another man or, you know what I mean? There, she would be, a, it would look like she had been unfaithful to Joseph. And, but even though, even though she could be misunderstood and it might look that way, she was willing to do it because that was God's plan. So she said in verse 38, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. In other words, I'm your servant, Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. So in other words, she was saying, I'm willing to do God's plan, you know, for my life. And so, uh, you know. And um, I just want to say, because um, as Pastor Gavin and I are reading from different Bibles, <clears throat> um, but it says, behold, the maid servant is what mine says. Yeah, yeah. So it goes yeah, that's along a good with what you just said. Of that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, the the next part of the story uh, is found in Matthew chapter one, and verse eighteen. So here, it it tells us about Joseph. Okay. So Mary goes away to see John the Baptist's mother and father. John the Baptist is still in Elizabeth's womb. So. So Mary hears about her cousin Elizabeth, who is in her old age, but God miraculously uh, gives them a child. So so she goes to see her cousin Elizabeth. uh, And and so when Mary returns after the birth of John the Baptist three months later, you know, she probably started to show some. So she, you know, so we don't know if she tried to tell Joseph or what. But, now, is she she's pregnant before they get married then? Yeah, kind Her of. And Joseph. I mean, yeah, yeah. They're espoused, which is legally which, marriage, but they didn't really have their wedding ceremony yet. Okay, so, so yeah, like you, as you said, yeah. being espoused to somebody, they do that for maybe a year or two, and then they right. have the wedding feast, and then yeah. they consummate the marriage, and then live together after that. So this right. is just when they're when they're um, betrothed, I guess is the word that right. I would be yeah. So for it's their, strong. Yeah, it's stronger than engaged, but yeah, uh, okay. yes, yeah, so they're legally married, but yeah, they didn't. Yeah, so so legally here's married, but the, but not not but not officially consummated. They didn't have the the ceremony, the feast, and all that because right. marriage was obviously done differently back then than it is today. Yeah, yeah. So in Matthew one eighteen, it says uh, his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together. Mine, I just want to point this out because I just yeah. said, used the word betrothed, um, yeah, exactly. and that's exactly what mine has. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that translation's close enough, yeah. Yeah. So she it says, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So verse 19, then Joseph, her husband, does... Can you read your translation there? Does it call her her husband? Yes, it does. It says, uh, then Joseph, her husband. But it does say in verse 18 um, that um, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost, same same thing. Yeah, Just, obviously, obviously. Ghost is yes, the older uh, English word. Yeah. Yep, yep. But it does it does say husband in this. Yes. Yeah. 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 So Joseph, her husband, being a just man. And not willing to make her a public example, he didn't. He didn't want to make her look bad. Was minded to put her away privately. In other words, divorce her privately. So he he wanted to just quietly re- divorce her. He had no desire to drag her name through the mud or anything. He thought she cheated on him. Yeah. You know, but verse twenty. But while he thought on these things, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, "Joseph, thou son of David." You know, in other words, descendant of David. Yeah. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So here the angel of the Lord says to Joseph, Joseph, wait, you, you got it all wrong. That child that she's carrying is of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh, so so don't be afraid to take her to you as your wife because uh, it's of the Holy Ghost. She wasn't unfaithful to you. Verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So, you know, uh, 
The word Jesus is the same name as Joshua or Jehoshua, which means, you know, the Lord saves or the Lord is salvation or savior. That's, that's the meaning of the name uh, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know, when I was a little guy growing up in church, it says he shall save his people from their sins. I thought by his people it meant the Jewish people, but it yeah. doesn't. I mean, it would include some of them, but it, yeah. it, everyone who comes to faith in Christ, whether Jew or Gentile, you and I aren't Jews, but we're yeah. Gentiles. You know, I think you have a little bit of Jewish blood in you from your grandfather. Uh, uh, um, but, actually, um, he's not. He's not my full grandfather. The one that you're oh, thinking yeah. of, Pappy. He's not yeah. actually blood relation. Oh, okay. All right. So. I mean, yeah. sort of, but not really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if on my, I'm almost, I don't think on my, That's, on my dad's side, um, has any Jewish blood. Um, yeah, I don't know. If, uh, I don't know. But anyway, we're, we're, we're Gentiles, you know. Yeah. But we're his people. When we, when we come to faith in Christ, we become a part of the people of God. And, and so, you know, that, that he shall save his people from their sins. So, there are some people that even though Jesus died on the cross for our sinners, they don't want to be saved. They either don't believe it or they don't want it because they know if they embraced Christ, there might be some things about their life that God might want them to change and they don't want that. You know, yeah. so, so they reject the whole thing, you know? Uh, so, um, you know, this, this is a fulfillment of, of a prophecy. So Jason, uh, Joseph, um, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord bidden him and took unto him his wife. I'm in verse 24. Sorry, I, I skipped a few verses to save time. Yeah. Now it says in verse 25, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn uh, son, and he called his name Jesus. Can you read verse 25 in in your version, do you have it yep. there? Yet? Yep, okay. and uh, and it says, um, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Right. So didn't know her means know her sexually. Yes, that, that's, that's what I was just about mean, to ask yeah. you. I was like, does that mean that they that he he did they did not really they did not physically consummate the marriage then until right. after she had delivered? Right, because it says he knew her not till yes. she had so. So, you know, after Je some point after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph, you know, had a normal marriage with the physical aspect of it. And I believe the teacher, the scriptures teach they had other kids that yeah, Jesus was had ask, brothers was, and sisters. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that because I thought that um, I knew of at least I know of at least I thought that he had at least one brother. Yeah. Well, uh, it's mentioned like James, the Lord's brother. Yeah. There's one point in the, the, the Gospels where. They said, hey, Jesus, your mother and your sisters and brothers are out here and they want to talk to you, you know. And and so uh, I I think it's obvious, you know, Mary, yeah, that, Mary and Joseph were good people. And yeah. so like for a woman to uh, and for husbands and wives to deny each other the, you know, the physical aspect of marriage, that's, you know, that, that's not godly to deny that. Uh, so, yeah. it's, you know. They were normal people in some ways, but they were not normal in that they were godly and you know loved the Lord and lived righteous lives. That's why, that's why not normal. Think, so why do you think he did that? Uh, why Joseph? Uh, yeah. Did why? That? Why did? Yes. Why did he? Why did he wait until after Jesus was born to have oh. a physical relationship with his wife? Yeah. Well, I, I believe uh, that God revealed that to him. Okay. Uh, be, so that there would be no, absolutely no question. Uh, I got you. That, that this birth was completely supernatural. I understand that. Okay, yeah, that makes yeah. sense to me. That would that would make sense to me because, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so now the next uh, the next event in the Christmas story is found in Luke. Um. Actually, before you get to that scripture, um, can I ask you oh, now why well, yeah. is his? You were just talking about Jesus' siblings. Um, and whether or not he may or may not have had them, um, this, there's points in the scripture that definitely reference them. So, you know, mm -hmm. why why is there not more though? Why is that not more clear? I mean, I know we've talked about the Bible is 
is really like a historical count of of Jesus's life, but you would imagine that his siblings would would have some kind of bearing on on his life. Yeah. Well, um, my guess is that okay, like when the writers in the Gospels wrote, they were directed by the Holy Spirit, and the Lord thought there were just more important things than. Uh, more details about his brother. Now, it does tell us a few things, like initially his brothers said to him, hey, why don't you do a few miracles and stuff here, and you know, so that everybody gets to know you. And it says, for neither did his brethren believe on him. So they were like goading him on to, hey, if you want to be noticed, why don't you do some miracles and show some signs? Neither did his brethren believe in him. So they didn't believe in him until... Well, that changed after the resurrection. Yeah, and then okay. James, that's when James believed, and then James became the leader of the church at Jerusalem. Oh, his so, brother. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, now, is, and that, the is that the called, James? Uh, is that the James from the book of James in the Bible? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Some scholars have a difference of opinion about that, but uh, I, I think so. But, you know, here's a confusing thing. There's... They're, James is a common name, so yeah. they're different Jameses. We've and, talked about uh, the names before, too, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, even John. There's a bunch oh, of Johns. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and then there, there are numerous Marys. Yeah. Like, Mary was a very common name. Uh, Joseph was a very common name uh, back then. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we're going. We're going back to what are we? Yeah, going so back Luke to? chapter two. Okay, so we're um, Luke. Okay, and uh, so in Luke chapter two, it says, uh, "I'm going to read while you turn there." Yes. It came to pass in the days that uh, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Now the word taxed is a Greek word, uh, it has like grapho or a graph, meaning to write, like a writing. So mine, this was a, a registration. Like a, census, a census, yeah, because mine yeah. says, mine literally says the word there is registered. Yeah, yeah. And so the reason I think it's translated tax in the King James is this is a registration for the purpose of taxation. So somebody once and, said two things never change in life, death, death and, and taxes. taxes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and um, I just want to point this out because I just called it a census, and the word it used is registered. Um, I don't know what, what your word is going to be in in uh, in verse two here, but mine is also census. It says this census first took place while queerness. Am I saying Cyrenius. that one right? Yeah. Say, Cyrenius. Yeah. Cyrenius. 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 Okay. Yeah. Was governing Syria. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So uh, all the world went uh, all the world went to be taxed everyone to his own city. So the idea is you had to go to your ancestral home, the home of your ancestors of your family uh, where you originated. So Joseph, he was of the house of David, right? Yeah. So verse four, Joseph also went up from Galilee, up meaning uphill, uh, out of the city of Nazareth that was in. Galilee, under Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Now, do you know, it, so in Micah, this, what's that? So for this sentence, for this census, or um, mm -hmm. everybody had to like go back to their homes, like their own, their home countries or home uh, cities. Well, the, yeah, yeah, like their, the, their ancestral home, like the home of their ancestors. Okay. Uh, so it was based on your family of origin, evidently. Okay, that's so, that's an interesting. To make people relocate is a pretty serious census. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So since uh, Joseph was of the house and lineage of David, he had to go back to Bethlehem. Okay. And and uh, so Bethlehem, uh, you know, that's where David was from. And in Micah chapter five verse two about 700 years before Christ, Micah said the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. I mean, it, it's it's plain, too. Yeah. It's not like, well, the symbolic language, if you take it and twist it this yeah. way and that way, 
No, it, it's very clear. It says, Thou Bethlehem of Judea, though you be little among the, the, the cities of Judah, out of thee shall come forth uh, who shall be governor, who shall rule my people Israel. And uh, so it, it very clearly the Messiah would come out of Bethlehem. And that's why, remember when the wise men came? Yeah. The wise men came to Jerusalem and they said, Hey, where is he who is born king of the Jews? We've seen a star in the east and we've come to worship him. And because uh, they came to Jerusalem because they thought, Hey, the king of the Jews, he'll be in Jerusalem. So Herod uh, asked the scribes and the Jewish uh, leaders, where do the scriptures say that the Messiah would be born? And they rightly said, well, Micah 5, verse 2, it says Bethlehem of Judea. So remember, Herod told him, go and search diligently for the young child. When you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Of course, he didn't really want to worship Jesus. He wanted to kill him. Oh, okay. Because, uh, you know, if this was, if Herod ruled over that region of Israel and he was called the king of the Jews, he didn't want, you know, some little baby born that would compete with him. So he he wanted to kill Jesus. So that's why he said, hey, go look for him so that I can come and worship him. He yeah. was a liar. Okay. Uh, it's, you know, politicians back then sometimes lied. Oh, and man, we I'm, see him lying today, don't we? Yeah, that's crazy. How 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 could you think that a politician, even back then or today, would would lie? Is just <laughs> yeah. completely, you know, probably spot on. Actually, um, <laughs> yeah. some that's another thing that doesn't change. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So they went to be taxed, and uh, verse six. Well, it was that they were there. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So, you know, the, the town was packed because people were coming there to register for the census, yep. uh, for the registration for this taxation. And and uh, so, you know, um, I, don't, I don't see the innkeepers being cruel or inconsiderate. I think he was just saying, hey, we're out of room, but uh, if you want to stay in the stable, it's better than yeah. nothing. Yeah. Now, there was an early Christian writer from about 150 AD, and he claims that this stable where they were kept was uh, a cave that was made into a stable. So that very well may be. You know, I don't know. I wasn't there, and the yeah. Bible doesn't really say. But, but based on that, but that's a pretty early reference, 150 AD. So yeah. you would think he would have access to information back then that we no longer have access to. So yeah. I, I would say it's probably reliable. So to, today, there's a church that is built over top of that uh, cave. Uh, so the manger that Jesus was in may not have been a wooden thing that you see in Christmas plays or nativity scenes. Yeah. It might have been more like a stone uh, ledge that was carved out from which they would feed animals. Yeah. So uh, after this, then, uh, you know, the shepherds are out in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. The angels announce, hey, Christ the Savior is born, you know, and uh, so they said, hey, let's go to Bethlehem and check it out. So they went to the the uh, the birthplace of Christ, to the stable they found the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in the manger. So um, the, uh, you know, the, the shepherds were there on the night that Jesus was born. Now, a lot of times, you know, in a, a nativity scene, you'll see the shepherds and then you'll see the wise men. The wise men were not actually there the night that Jesus was born. Now, they were there in connection with his birth, but... Uh, when when they went to the house to see Jesus, uh, it, it says they were in a house. And okay. also, uh, also like in the Greek language, there are different words for children. So there's the word brephos, which refers to an infant. So when the shepherds went, they found the 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 brephos, the infant, you know, Jesus laying in the manger. But okay. there's another word. Um, uh, Pideon. Uh, we get the word pediatric from that. 
ID on. So that would refer to like a, a young child, a little child, like a toddler. Yeah. Uh, so um, when the, the wise men came and they visited Christ, he was in a house and they saw the young child. So by then it was a Pideon. So probably, you know, probably two years old or less because Herod said, okay, all the male children in, Jude, in Bethlehem, two years old and under, I want them killed. So, so it wasn't the very night that Jesus was born, but it was in connection with his but, birth. They, okay, they knew so he was born. They came to see him. That's interesting. So, so they weren't there even on the night. So they weren't there on the night of his birth then. No. Uh, and not, and not even likely days later, you're talking about maybe even up to two, two or three years, maybe. Well, it, it would have had to be less than two years. Okay. Because. Herod because ordered the, it, that all the male children two okay. years old and under be killed. So, so it was less than two years. So, uh, you know, okay. it, so I guess the question is how long would they have been in the stable before they went to a house? So they, they went and they found a house in Bethlehem. So I don't know that it could have been a week later, you know, I don't know how long it took till, you know, they were able to find a place, but they were in a house by that time. And also, you don't know how long it doesn't say how long it takes for the wise men to find them. We know that they show right. up and they ask um, and, you know, Herod yeah. says to him, well, when you find them, send word. So who knows how long that could have taken? It's not like you got the yellow pages back then. You could just go to the phone booth and and now right. I'm really dating myself because there aren't even phone booths anymore. But, you know, you get what I'm saying, that there was right. no you know directory or something to go look up. Oh, Oh, this woman just had a baby. This might this might be it, you know. Yeah, and and there weren't any cell phones with GPS, but yeah, the Lord gave him sort of a GPS. Uh, you know, they said that they saw his star in the east. Yeah, and you know, I believe initially they saw a star. Some people think that two planets may have almost converged and together looked like a big star at that point. But eventually, it looks like there was a, a star, and then maybe an angel sort of took over the direction and shone brightly as a star. And because uh, it says that it stood over the place where the Christ child was. Okay. And, and that's how they were guided right to where Mary and Joseph were. So I think at that point, it was like an angel who appeared as a star. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Now, what's the significance of the wise men? Well, the wise men came from the East. They were Gentiles. In other words, they weren't Jewish. And so the significance of that was that it sort of prefigured or foreshadowed that when Christ would come, he would be not only the king of the Jews and the savior of the Jewish people, but people from all over the world. He would bring uh, people from all different nations who would believe on him to a relationship with God, to be restored to God. So, you know, the message that Jesus uh, told his disciples to proclaim after he arose from the dead was go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. So this signified that God was going to bring uh, Jew and Gentile to the true and living God through the Messiah, which is, you know, the prophecies in the Old Testament scriptures tell us that. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is how once the wise men arrived in Judea, they were pointed to Bethlehem because that's what the scriptures said. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, here's another thing, John. Uh, so, of course, God knew that Herod was going to try to kill the baby Jesus. Yeah. So the Lord warned Joseph in a dream, saying, get up and go down to Egypt, because Herod will seek the young child's life. Well, Mary and Joseph didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. So if, if you had to get up and go down to Egypt, it would take some money and some finances. But see, if God really wants us to do something, he'll provide for us and provide the way. And so uh, what gifts did the wise men bring to Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus? Gold, yep. frankincense, and myrrh. These are very valuable commodities. 
And so that's God's way of providing for Mary and Joseph so they would have the finances to go down to Egypt and stay for a while till after the death of Herod. Wow, I never even thought of that, too. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So the Lord that's why can, the wise men brought gifts. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah they that, did to worship him, but that was another reason. Yeah, I mean, yes, of course, yeah. to worship him, but there was, yeah, there was even another reason behind it other than just to worship him. Yep. So, yeah. Now, uh, another thing, their gifts, the, the meaning is sort of prophetic because gold was symbolic of royalty. And frankincense was associated with worship. Uh, and and uh, the myrrh was something that they would use. It was a good smelling uh, uh, commodity that they would use to anoint the dead. Like when somebody would die, they would yeah. put myrrh on their body so that it would like sort of hold down the stench for a while. Yeah. You know, before they really rotted away or whatever. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, gold spoke that he was king. Frankincense spoke of the worship, uh, and, and how his life would be a, a pleasing, uh, good smelling savor in the eyes of God. And the myrrh pointed to his suffering and his death. So it was, Ooh. they were kind of like prophetic in their symbolism. Wow. Yeah. But there was a, a, a practical purpose, though, to help finance Mary and Joseph going down to Egypt for a while. Yeah, but isn't that interesting, though? All these, all these different um, symbology and, you know, the symbology of it and, um, yeah. you know, just the organization almost. Of, I mean, that's what it is. It was, it, you know, and the organization of it is just, it's, it's crazy when you actually look at it and you can actually see it. You're like, wow. Mm-hmm. You know, these things weren't just at by chance or at random. That's, you know, it's statistically impossible. Statistically impossible for the amount of things in this book, if you want to chalk it up to, oh, that's just something random that happened. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, there's a whole book here. of that. At, at some point, that's not t- statistically impossible. Yeah, it's more than just coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, I, I would say this. Why, why were the wise men, why were they even looking at the stars, expecting the king of the Jews to be born. Well, they came from the east, probably Babylon, or part of the media Persian empire. And see, the Jewish people were there. They were carried away captive by the Babylonians in three separate invasions, 606, 598, and 586 BC. So in Babylon and later in media Persia, they had the scripture. So these wise men... Uh, the Greek word is magoi. They were like a class of of priests and scholars who would who were very learned. They would study different things, and they would advise kings and and uh, you know leaders. And so you know they had the scriptures, and they saw like Daniel chapter nine. Okay, if after the command to rebuild the city of Jerusalem was given, then the Messiah he would be cut off. So here's where we are now. So, man, the Christ soon should be born. So I think Daniel chapter 9 was one of those passages. And then there's another passage where it says, a star shall rise out of Jacob. And, and uh, you know, maybe they were looking at that and, and uh, the Lord let them know, hey, this king would be Jew- the king of the Jews, this Messiah, uh, he's going to be born. That's his star. Uh, go follow it and go check it out. So that's how they, it was a star <clears throat> that appeared, and that's how the wise men knew which direction to travel. Yeah. Um, yeah, evidently they were looking for some sign, and God showed them, you know, a star. Well, you, you the, talked about the star possibly or potentially being like an angel um, or something of that nature uh, to help point them in the right direction. I Just uh, to point yeah. out a, an actual scientific not to say that God wasn't responsible for it because he's the one that gave us the sciences. Um, but it could have been a supernova too, a, a, a star going mm. supernova that was, that went bright, um, yeah. that disappeared. So, yeah. Uh, you well, know, you know to, also, um, there are people who like are a lot more knowledgeable in astronomy than I am. And there's this one video I saw called the star of Bethlehem, where a guy takes a computer program and like he, he rewinds yeah. know, like the stars where they were 
And he says that that when Christ was born, there were a couple couple planets that came real close together, so it made him look like one big star. Oh, okay. So maybe that's what they saw initially. Then when they got closer, the star, you know, maybe an angel kind of took over the guidance and direction because stars don't, I mean, normal stars and even supernovas don't go and then, you know, lead you to a certain place no, you're, and hang, you know. So, I understand what you're saying. So yes, it could have I, been I, a I supernova of some sort. God could have used something like that initially. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's um, possible. Yeah, you're right. If, if you're following a star, I mean, you'll go in the general right direction, but it's not going to lead you eventually to like a point on the earth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, that's that's not without gear or proper equipment to be able to figure that out. So, yeah, I agree with what you're saying um, that once it got closer, like it was just a the star being, you know, when it first appeared was like, all right, had, had in this direction. And then as they got closer to Bethlehem or, or Judea, then, then you know, as you said, maybe it was an angel or something that appeared to, to lead them in a more specific direction, a much closer direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. Yeah. So then then after that, uh, you know, Herod, uh, you know, he had all the children two years old and under in Bethlehem in that area killed. Uh, but, you know, Christ was in, in Egypt, so... Yeah. He didn't get him, you know. And then, yeah. it, then, then later on, uh, the angel of the Lord told Joseph, "Okay, go ahead and return to the land of Israel because Herod is dead, you know." And and uh, so they they ended up in back in Nazareth. Yeah. How old you? How old was Jesus then at that point? Um, we don't really know. But, okay. But uh, yeah, the, uh, not much. Uh, detail is given about the childhood of Christ. Yeah, probably the reason it's not really that important in the whole scheme of things. But when he was twelve years old, they took him to Jerusalem, and uh, you know they lost track of him, and they started heading home. And Mary said, "Hey, uh, where's Jesus?" And Joseph said, uh, "I thought you knew where he was." <laughs> and <laughs> so they went back to Jerusalem. And they were looking for him all over the place, and finally they found him in the temple. Huh. And he was talking to the leaders and, like, uh, asking them questions, and they were amazed at his answers and his understanding and, and the things that he was asking and what he was saying. And and <clears throat> Mary and Joseph said, hey, Jesus, why would you, you know, why didn't you, uh, why did you deal with us this way? And, and he said, um, didn't you know that I had to be about my father's business. Hmm. So, so like as a, as a child, like Jesus was God, but he limited himself to a human body and laid aside independently exercising his powers as God. So, so that's how, even though he was God, he didn't know everything when he was a baby. Like, he wasn't a super baby that knew all yeah. things, you know. Yeah. So it says he increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. So so in his understanding, he thought, oh, I, I, I thought you guys would know that I would need to be about my father's business. Yeah. So that shows at the age of 12, he knew that he was the son of God. Yeah. He knew he was the Messiah and he was there doing his father's business. But it says then that, that he went, he was he went with Mary and Joseph, and was subject unto them. In other words, he obeyed their authority because yeah. that's what kids are supposed to do. Yeah. So it was it like was, a misunderstanding, you know. Yeah, he, yeah. Jesus didn't run away from him. He was just right. he was just learning. He was learning in the temple. Yeah. You know, and, just and like he uh, thought, hey, I'm doing my father's business. I, you know, mom and dad, I thought you would understand that. Yeah. Yeah, which they probably did then after they thought about it. Um, yeah. But, you know, probably still taught them, hey, you still can't, you know, run away from us. and Yeah, you got to let us know. Yeah, you got to let us know. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Imagine what it would be like growing up with a perfect brother. Because <laughs> I knew I didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, me neither. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's um, that would be interesting. That would be something. I Yeah, I can't imagine that. And. You know, it makes sense, though, that that's why they teased him. I mean, how would you, be, you know, would you believe something like that? I mean, yeah, 
you know. Yeah. Um, so is that the end or is there? Well, well, just one, one more thing I wanted to say. So, so what's the whole purpose and reason for this? Well, you see, uh, our sins have separated us from God relationally. And our sins we have made us God's enemies. And, you know, we're criminals against God. So if we die in our sin, one day God will, he, he's a righteous judge, he'll judge us. Yeah. And, we're, and if he judges us righteously, we're all in big trouble. So the only way out of this is for God to give us a pardon. Forget yeah. about trying to earn your way to heaven by being good. It's never going to be good enough. That can't that can't remove sin and evil. So, so there's only one way God could still be good and righteous and forgive sinful people. That's if our sins were paid for. So that's the purpose of Jesus coming. He came. So he was one of our blood relatives. He was human, yet he was God in the flesh, and he lived a sinless life obeyed God the Father in every single way, then when he offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins, the penalty for our sin and the wrath of God for our sin was placed upon him. So because he was of infinite worth, his life was so valuable that if offered freely for us, it, our, God could be righteous and forgiving us. He could say, your charges against you are dismissed. They've been paid for by the death of Jesus and his resurrection. So that's the real reason, really, for God so loved the world that he gave yep. his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, you know, the word perish means to uh, face eternal ruin. So it doesn't okay. mean annihilation. In other words, it doesn't mean to go out of existence, to perish means to face eternal ruin and never being able to be restored to what you originally were intended to be. So, you know, um, I, I used to love to eat bananas. I can't eat them anymore because of uh, too much sugar in them. You know, when you get my age, you might <laughs> understand. But, yeah. but bananas, you know, you first get them and they're green. Then they turn, you know, start to get those little spots and they're ripe. But if you let them go, a lot longer they get brown, and then you can use them for pancakes or, you know, banana bread. But eventually they just get so rotten that all you can do is throw them out. They, yeah. they perish. Uh, so they're forever, in terms of eating them, they're forever ruined. Yeah. Well, they don't go out of existence, but, but they're forever ruined, and they'll never be restored to what they originally were. So they're no yeah. good. Yeah, in terms, I mean, you could use them as fertilizer, but as far as, uh, you know, food, they're gone. So some yeah. foods are perishable. Well, to perish means to face eternal ruin separated from God in hell. So, so um, you know, whosoever believeth in him, God sent his son. He loved the world so that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So to yeah. believe on him means we, we come to him with a heart of repentance. It says, God, I am sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for wanting to un run my own life independently from you. And I want to be made right with you. So I, I ask you to forgive me on the basis of Christ's death and his resurrection. Come in and forgive me and save me and cleanse me of my sin. And Jesus be my Lord and my savior. And, yeah, come in and change my life and make me what you want me to be. You know. Yeah. So I don't want to be your enemy anymore. You know, I want to be yeah. made right with you. So that's what it means to believe on Him, and we who believe on Him have everlasting life. Yeah, and um, to expand on what you were just saying about how um, change, we, you know, people, we, you know, you say, hey, God, come in, change me, and you know, and that's a lot of people. Some well, I don't want to say a lot of people. Some people, that's what they have problems with too. They're like, oh, I like myself, I don't want to change, and um, it's not that you you have to change, but that by becoming a Christian, by by believing in Jesus, that changes you. That changes your behavior. Yeah. You don't have to try; it just happens most of the right. time. 
Now everybody struggles yeah. with everybody has struggles or you know things that they struggle with more so than others. Uh, you know, as we've said, yeah. we're all yeah. sinners. That's we're not going to make it on good deeds and who we are as a person because we're all evil. Humanity is evil people, um, yeah. and the only way we can yeah, make it is by asking corrupt, forgiveness. Simple. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and asking forgiveness and, and repentance. Um, but by doing that and accepting Jesus into your life, that's that changes you without even trying. Yeah. So you don't yeah. have you don't change the person who you are, you just change with God's in your life, you're gonna change. Right. You know um, and it happens um, naturally. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Jeremiah and Ezekiel talk about the new covenant. And uh, you know, it describes how God will take he says, I'll take the heart of stone out of you and give you a heart of flesh. And I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my ways. So, yeah, he he kind of he changes our heart. So, yeah, there's some things about us that he made us a certain way that he doesn't want to change that. But he wants to change the bad in us. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, before we uh, before we completely wrap up, there's one more thing that I wanted to um, ask you, um, because. Um, if in the and the Old Testament, the New Testament, we've we've gone over in other episodes that the New Testament um, is about Jesus and the New Covenant and how we get to heaven now through Jesus's blood and and asking Him for forgiveness. Right. Um, and we've yeah. talked about how you got to heaven prior to that, hmm. um, because heaven still existed prior to that. It was just a different way to get to heaven. It wasn't believing in Jesus. It was a different. You know, we talked about the different ways, um, and. Now, I wanted to ask you, because God knows everything. He created the world. He knows how things are going to go. Um, did he, in the, in the Old Testament, did he foresee that, he, that there was going to be too much corruption and evil in the world for the original way that he set things up? So did he, did he set things up in a way that he knew he was going to have to have uh, himself or his, a son in flesh who would then have to die on the cross for everybody's sins as a way to get to heaven. I don't want to say an easier way, but yeah. in a different way, yeah, something good. that was more achievable maybe than, than the way people were able to in the old Testament. Good question. Well, we know that God knows everything. So he knows the beginning from the ending and the book of the revelation. It says that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Okay, so what that means, how could he be the lamb slain from the foundation of the world? That means that before the God, God even created the world, that he knew that the human race would fall into sin and would need to be redeemed. So he already had the plan that he would send Jesus. So, so what, became, what came before Jesus was more a preparation for when Christ came. So before the cross, people were saved by God's grace through faith, when they they came to God in repentance and and they trusted in the mercy and in the grace of God for their forgiveness. So like in Romans chapter 4, it says that both uh, Abraham and David were saved uh, by grace through faith. So Jesus didn't die yet, but they so they didn't trust in Jesus on the cross and his death and resurrection. They trusted in the mercy and in the grace of God uh, to forgive their sins. So, so God forgave them and was righteous in forgiving them because, you know, someday Jesus would die and pay for their sins in the past. Okay. So, so they, they put faith in God and, and it would be taken care of in, in the future. We put our faith in the grace of God and look to what Jesus did for us in the past. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. excellent, great. Um, I think that was a great episode. Um, please share this out, uh, share this episode out, and I hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, maybe you even learned something. Um, Pastor Gavin, of course, is coming to us from his church, Moore's Mountain Church, um, and you can go check out his Facebook page um, at facebook.com slash moorsmountain.church. Um, and, of course, he has his own podcast, which is on YouTube. The link is available in the description. Yeah, and also uh, our, our church has a website, moorsmountainchurch.org. Dot org? So, yeah, if you just do org, yeah, dot org. Yeah, hold, yeah hold Moors on, Mountain on. Church. Hold on, Pastor. We're, uh, you're having a little lag. We're having a little lag on you. Of course, right at the end of the episode, 
Yeah. When we actually have a little lag. All right. So that's so the website then is Moore's Mountain. Moore's Mountain Church dot org. Dot org. Okay. That time we got it all of it. So um okay. yeah, you can you, you every time you were saying it was like we were missing a part of it. Um so yes, Moore's Mountain dot org um for his actual website. Um of course we're on Rumble, rumble.com slash C slash the boiling point podcast. That's all in lowercase letters, and we're on Facebook, Facebook.com slash the boiling point podcast. Um, please share out our episodes. That's really what we need um, to continue to grow this podcast is for people to share the episodes um, so that we can try and get more viewers. We appreciate that. Um, Marcus Fredrickson, we miss you. He is going to play us out. He handles all the music. Make sure you go give his music a, um, a like and a share at uh, ReverbNation.com and, uh, .com slash Marcus Fredrickson. Sorry about that. The link is also available in the description. Um, as is all our social media links and Pastor Gavin's links. Everything is available in the description, so go check it out. But uh, Marcus Fredrickson will play us out. Look for a very special episode on December 26th. That was Marcus's birthday, and um, I'll be doing an episode with his sister, Mia, and we're going to release that episode on his birthday on December 26th. So make sure you look for that one. Um, I'm still working out trying to get Uncle Mark on another episode. We'll see if we can get it before Christmas. Um, but if not, definitely look for um, the episode with Marcus's sister, Mia, on December 26th. And, of course, we'll have more episodes coming um, in the new year as well. Pastor Gavin, Senior Faith Correspondent for the Boiling Point Podcast, broadcasting from Moore's Mountain Church. I am Merry your Christmas. host. Yep, I am your host, JD. Merry Christmas. And um, in case we don't see you, just in case, uh, Happy New Year as well. And um, that's the end. not around have you found i'm always on your